Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Good afternoon to you. Uh, I don't know wherever you are. It should be the 1st of September, um, which means um, it's the start of spring. So spring has sprung. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Prosper Tarovinga, and I'm the founder and CEO of Live Long Digital, your one-stop shop for um, everything uh, digital marketing. I see Craig has just tuned in. Thank you so much, my man, for tuning in. Um, normally, when we go through this uh, lunch and learn, if it's your first time to actually uh, check in with us, you are going to be left with a life full of purpose and you're going to start living a life full of impact and also a life with prosperity. Because what we do is we talk about things that seemingly look stupid, seemingly look easy, but they actually formulate the foundation of what is how our life should be lived. Now, like I said, my name is Prosper and I see Steve Brosman has just tuned in. Thank you so much, sir. And I also see Mongameli is tuning in. Once we, you know, every single day for the next 30 minutes, we'll be sitting here so that we can talk to you about how you can start, scale and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And also how to actually make a lot more money with what you already have while you're having less struggle. It's a Friday today. I'm going to keep it real light so that we are all going to just jump into the weekend. But I don't want to, you know, you know, overplay this whole thing that we've got here. We just got to really put in a lot of work, guys. No matter where you are, no matter what it is that you're doing, you really, really, really have to, um, you know, be true to yourself and actually put in the work that's required for you to get the results. Okay. Now I've got a question for you right now. Um, it's the start of September. That means we are nine months into 2017. Did you, um, did you set any new year's resolutions when the year started? Okay. That's my big question to you. Did you set any New Year's resolutions when the year started? The reason why I'm asking is, if you did, how long did you, um, you know, did you stay with those resolutions? How long, um, you know, did they last and how much of them have come true? Okay, I see Tracy uh, has just tuned in. Tanya, thank you so much for tuning in. Look, Corin. My man, thank you so much for tuning in. I just posed a question and I said, at the beginning of the year, did any of you start off with New Year's resolutions? Now, um, Tanya says, uh, July 1, I did. So you started all over again. All right. The thing is, we set out... We all start off, you know, with all these good intentions, no matter, maybe it's the start of the year, start of the season, start of the month, whatever time it is, but our habits get the best of us, all right? And the, the reason why all of this is happening is because we haven't really paid so much attention to what we react to, what we actually love, what, who we are as a person. We might you know, get influenced by maybe watching a 30 minute video like this, but you always go back to your true self. All right. You always go back to the habits that got you where you are in the first place. That's the reason why whatever course you're going to do, whatever, you know, shiny object you're going to buy, it's not going to work for you because your habits are not carrying you through. All right. So at the end of the day, we stop blaming things that are external. What are you doing to actually make sure your core person, your core habits are actually in direct alignment to what you really, really want to achieve? Okay. Now, Tanya says what we see in our mind's eye, we can achieve it. We can believe it. Then that becomes our habits. Exactly. All right. My habit every single day is to wake up, shower, put on a tie and walk five steps down the hallway into my office. The reason why I do that is because I want to formulate a habit that what I do matters. What I do actually matters. Because if I just wake up with sweatpants and a t-shirt or whatever it is, no disrespect to those people that do that, I won't feel like I'm doing something of substance. I won't feel like I'm, I'm supposed to be working. 
All right. So at the end of the day, some people might think, oh, OK, maybe he's just a show off. But this is my way of, um, you know, maintaining my habits. Six years ago, I would have been sitting in Africa, maybe having, you know, you know, butt, butt naked on a zebra with a bone sticking out my throat. I was just giving you, you know, some sort of an, an idea or an indication of what could have been happening. But I really have to shift my focus to make me realize that this is now what I'm doing. So at the end of the day, if you're sitting and watching Netflix with a T-shirt that you're going to come up and start working in again, your mind sees that. Your mind is not in tune with what you're doing and it won't take it seriously. All right. So at the end of the day, your one first step to actually any given success is your ability to actually recognize what opportunities you have in your own life that other people don't have. What other things do you have that work for you that you are not, you know, putting in place that other people are um, don't see? That's that's your purpose. That's your mission in life to figure out what your strengths are and what you can impart on other people. But you can't do that if you're not in tune with who you exactly are and who or what you can teach. I asked a question the other day. What can you teach me? Because we're here to live. We're here to learn. Okay, and in the process, while we're learning, we now have an obligation to impart and to contribute to the greater humanity. All right. But if you're not in tune with who you're supposed to be, if your habits are not pushing you towards where you're supposed to go to the people that are supposed to listen to your stuff, how do you think you're going to escape this conundrum? You're thinking, maybe your frontal cortex is thinking, oh, yes, we're supposed to be doing this, but your subconscious is not in alignment with the work that you're saying you're putting out there. So if you're not going to empower yourself with the habits, with the way of doing things, you will never reach whatever you deem to be successful. Because at the end of the day, let me tell you something. Success is how you define your own um, achievements. It's, 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 it's paramount to what you think your own success is. Maybe your success is being a good dad. Maybe your success is having a certain figure in your account. Maybe your success is, um, you know, having buildings in the city. Maybe your success is helping your community. Whatever you define your success is, that's for you. But failure is, is universally known as people that have not had the ability to actually achieve their goals. Now, you might set goals, you might set, um, you know, you might set, um, you know, you know, yardsticks of, of the kind of life that you want to reach or the, the kind of person you want to become. If you don't reach that, then that's where it means you have failed. But it, it, whatever time it takes in between there, that's for you to figure out. And your habits are the only ones that will carry you through, you know, that will bridge that gap. Okay. So no matter how you're going to define your own success, you're going to need a system of mechanisms under the bonnet that is going to carry you through. You won't just reach success by writing it on the board. You are going to have to act it out. And if your subconscious is in alignment with whatever it is that you're working on, is in alignment with your work, and all of the things that you're doing are working in unison, that's when you become successful. The reason why people go and, and, and have fatigue on a Friday or, or can't wait until it's Friday or they, they, they burn out or things like that is because their habits are not allowing them to become the person that they want to be. So there's a disconnect. So how can you as an individual live the most um, you know, empowered life possible? By putting in the work. You put in the work first on yourself. All right, because you cannot do well if you don't feel well. So you, you want to make, if you want to make a, a significant difference to the world, to your bank balance, to the people that are around you, you have to focus on the things that you can control. And most of the, and most of the things that you can control, which is maybe your hope, your, your attitude, your drive and your willingness to actually learn or, or your willingness to hustle is, is, is what you can control. Now, what are you doing to make sure that you constantly have that in check? 
All right. So now it's spring. It's 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 almost yet another time of the year. Again, we're going to be going out with our bicycles, playing around with our kids, looking at the flowers bloom. You know why? Because those flowers were getting ready in the winter. What have you been doing in the winter to get ready to shine in the in the in the spring? So maybe maybe 2017 is almost done and you really haven't done anything. What have you done in your commitment to keeping your objective to become the best human that you can be? You see, if your individual life is empowered, it can only then empower, you know, other people. And then that sort of empowering impact will then become your success. The people around you, are they happy? The relationships that you have, are they, are, they, are they prosperous? Are they enjoyable? The business that you're running, is it prosperous? Is it enjoyable? That's when now people start looking at that as, oh, he's a success. But these habits that you've got to formulate. You know, I was looking at my little girl. She's two years old. Okay. Six years ago. She did not exist. Six years ago, that's when I came into Australia. I had nothing. I knew nobody. And um, as they say, you can take the, the man out of the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out of him. You can still see signs of the ghetto inside of me. But my little girl is a completely different kid. All right. She's smart. She's quick. She, she, she's very, very vocal and she's very, you know, demanding. I, I don't think I was like that as a kid. And I think it's the environment that she's growing up in because her dad is allowing her to flourish like that. Most of us never had an environment that allows you to flourish and actually explore the world around you. you, you are, you're told to do what you have to do. And so what that means is we have taken habits of other people that have come before us and we haven't taken the time to actually change them and make them our own. There's a lot of things that we do wrong every single day, even the way we breathe. I read somewhere that you have to count five times while taking in one breath. You know, that's supposed to be the length of a breath, but we're taking in short breaths. And the lesser oxygen you're taking into your head, the lesser it, it, it uses to actually function. So that means we're not using our whole bodies to the full capacity that we have because we've taken on the habits of those people that came before us. So maybe your successes are, are, are all streamlined and are all, you know, governed by the people that came before you. What have you done to change that aspect? What have you done to become the you that you're supposed to be? What have you done to become the authentic person you're supposed to be? Going back to my little girl. Right now, she can't even speak my other language, um, which is Shona. All right. Okay. She can't even speak period. But what I'm trying to say is if she had grown up in Africa, she wouldn't be speaking English. If she had grown up in Zimbabwe, she would be speaking Shona and Debella with all the other kids. But her environment is going to make her think that the only language she can speak is English. If I go to her and tell her that we came from Africa, she's just going to look at me and be like, dad, are you crazy? She, she knows she's from Australia. So what happened before you, what happened, you know, before you that now influences the environment or the way you think? Some of the thoughts that we have are not our thoughts. We are just leaving the dreams of other people and we're thinking it's our own thing. And that's the reason why our business is not profitable. That's the reason why our, our lives are not, you know, of a happier existence. I believe there's no such thing as failure if you actually are doing what you love. There's no such thing as failure if you are actually following your own habits. Because who is to judge? Everybody else is trying to learn, you know, and, and trying to survive in order not to die. Everyone is out there learning. Nobody knows everything. So who is there to judge that you failed? It's only the limiting beliefs and the habits that we put and impart on ourselves. You know why? Because we need to control each other. Well, we, we need to, if we don't impart that, you know, fear or everything else, you know, my little kid will be on the road and, and, and running after cars if, if she wanted to. All right. But that fear is imposed on us by people that came before us. Have you ever questioned any of that? Have you ever questioned why you are, you are where you are right now? The fact that I came in from Zimbabwe, 
All right. I came from Zimbabwe and I shifted my whole environmental uh, influences. I shifted who I talked to. I shifted everything. I changed. I even think I changed my DNA. Have you ever questioned why you're supporting what you have right now? Why, why what you think is right is right? I told you about breathing. It is say that if you really want to feel good, you have to count five times with every breath you take. So what makes you think that the habits that you have are the ones that are going to carry you through to what you have? That's the reason why it's the 1st of September today and you still haven't achieved your goals. You still haven't achieved your resolutions. You have the power and the responsibility to actually find that place inside of yourself where everything is possible. It's, it's inside of you. You've got it. But maybe you're just too lazy to actually start thinking for yourself. Maybe you're just too lazy to actually pick up a book and read and educate yourself so that you can learn and know what. Because what they say is everything that we have in front of us was created by people that were no smarter than us. It took Thomas Edison, um, what is it called? It took Thomas Edison 10,000 attempts to light a light bulb. I just flick a switch. Now who's smarter? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not relative, but just look at the proportion of what it is. You know, it, it took the Wright brothers broken bones and all that stuff because they, you, what, what do you have to do in order to fly? You just go and pay your money and then somebody flies you. You're smarter than those people. You've got more capability. You've got more options than people that came prior to you. But just because of the habits that were instilled by those before you, you have chosen not to take part in, in, in directing your own life. So the more you're open to possibilities around yourself, the more you are open to who you are as a person, you will see the magic unfold. The people you start connecting, the customers you start, you know, attracting, your life becomes profitable. All right. So I've got that question yet again. So if you started this year, January 1st, with a couple of resolutions, how many of them have you achieved? Mm -hmm. Right. So at the end of the day, we've got so much in front of us, but I don't think we are literally utilizing any of that. And it all stems from the habits that we actually have. All right. Good habits are always the key to your success. And with the good habits, you actually unlock. Um, I mean, with bad habits, that really is, you know, a, a pathway to what now is called failure. It's just the bad habits that you, you're, you're putting together. Um, Gully says, I need to work on my finances. Still trying myself. I will never ask no one. I, I can't comment on that because at the end of the day, it's up to you to decide where you want to place yourself. We've got nothing but time, guys. You know? And we all know that negative minds are closed minds. Right. So try not to be negative about your life around you because a closed mind would just simply refuse to see what is available to them. We all have all these options. All you got to do is pick and make a choice to say today is my day or is it your day number one, whatever you want to call it. Some people just really want to focus on, on what isn't right for them. Some people really just want to focus on, on, on the news. Some people really want to focus on things that do not even align with themselves. Right now, if you hear about, you know, stuff happening in Bujumbura, how are you going to help the situation there? We then take our minds off of what is important. We then stop working on ourselves and really want to get involved in things that don't even matter. Why would you choose to live this way? Why would you choose to make yourself suffer and not really just look at the person that you're supposed to look after and, 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 and you know, do what's meant to be done and focus on creating the best habits? You, you cannot live being a slave to your own impulses. All right. So if you formulate really, really good habits, it will start working in your favor because even when you're driving, 
All right, you can you can concentrate on listening to something. Maybe some people are watching this while they're driving, but your your subconscious mind knows where to turn, knows what to do, brake or accelerate. There's a lot of things that are happening in your body right now that you have no control of. The food is digesting, your heart is beating, there's blood that's pumping in this vein right now that you don't have a control of. But it's because of the instructions that are sit sitting on your subconscious. So why don't you just create that bed of really nice behaviors and habits so that your body just works on impulse? Yeah? Because your life is a direct reflection of your beliefs. If you believe that everybody's out there to get you, you're not going to put yourself out. If you believe that nobody likes you, you're not going to put yourself out. But if you want a better outcome, you need to start creating it. You know what I mean? Your opportunities for, for any hope or, 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 or some sort of a change, they are so boundless, guys. It's, it's, it's ridiculous how much opportunity we have in this day and age. And it all starts within yourself. What are you doing to institute that you, you stay on course, you, you actually you know, concentrate on the work that's supposed to be done, you're actually working on becoming a better version of yourself? Sometimes this is good to listen to. I know you, you get motivated, yada, 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 but you don't do anything after that. Now it's the 1st of September. What have you done the whole year, nine months? What have you contributed to society? Spring has just sprung right now. It will be grand opening, grand closing. Are we going to hear about your work? Are we going to hear about your stuff? Your habits, your beliefs, all of those things are ruled by your appetite, your greed, what you love, what you read, who you talk to, and your habits. So you really got to formulate the best habits out there for you to actually start seeing, um, you know, a, 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 Opportunities that other people cannot see because everybody is wired differently. All right. So for you to be authentic, you really got to start focusing on who you are. But how are you going to know who you are if you don't spend time with yourself? Hmm. McCain, Edwin, thank you so much for tuning in. Ron Sinrad, thank you so much for tuning in. There's a lot of things that are going to happen in your life. Some of the things that you don't, you don't really like. But there's one thing. Life and success, guys. I don't want to lie to you. They're all built around things that are unfair. It's how you respond to them because of your habits, of your beliefs that you actually win in life. There's a lot that we can encounter, you know, you know and, 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 and most, of the, most of things in life is not right. Right now in Australia, they're, de they're debating whether to, to uh, um, accept, uh, you know, lesbians to get married or gay people to get married. Who are we to decide what other people should go through in their life? It's just an escape that people are, are, are trying to get themselves involved. You know why? Because they are not wanting to face the, the music of what's happening in their lives. There's so much that we're going to encounter that is not right, unjust, or incorrect. You just have to make sure you're doing your part to contribute to a greater good in the world. And let me tell you something, authenticity will come out of that. Just focus on who you are and who you want to be responsible, which is you, your family, and the challenges that you put yourself into, and just try and get yourself out of those. You know, some people, uh, you know, get into positions in life, maybe politicians or whatever. They're just doing it because they're looking after themselves. Nobody cares about you except you. So you got to really, really start looking into what am I doing to ensure that my habits are going to sustain me up until the end. You know, so when you shift your focus to really start, you know, looking after yourself, you start valuing yourself. You become a true version of who you are. And in the process, people get noted, start noticing it. You start impacting other people and you start putting influence. And the more influence you have, the more income you have. So instead of trying to trick people into thinking that you are authentic, just start living it.
And when you shift your, your, your whole focus to, to living your whole being of yourself wholeheartedly, guys, I don't want to lie. You actually start, you know, non-violently living your true self. You now have a life that is true. Um, and, you know, you, you start being authentic and you start being of significance, which is one of the needs that everybody has. People want to be significant. Everybody wants to be respected. Everybody wants to be loved. But what are you doing to buy that love from the other people? Because if you're not giving any out, how do you expect anybody else to give you, um, you know, that love? How do you expect anybody else to give you that respect? If you're not respecting other people's time, how do you expect them to respect your time? How do you expect them to want to buy your stuff if you're not reciprocating with your, 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 your knowledge, your content and everything else like that? So you might think that this talk is, is not about you, but what are you doing in order to receive that which you are out there looking for? At the end of the day, we have all these people that are talking, oh yeah, I want a big bank account. Oh, I need a big bank, bank balance. Louis Hay just passed away yesterday, right? And other people that have, might have you know, gone past her, Martin Luther King, all those people. How much money did he have in his pocket when he died? How much money did Mother Teresa have in her pocket when she died? Just really, really start working on yourself and let your success do all the talking, guys. And Robert says, I give out all I have, except it doesn't seem to run out. Because if you've got abundance inside of you, nothing will ever run out. We have all of these things, guys. Start running your own race and stop comparing yourself to other people. Another person's success does not equate your failure. All right, it's your life, so focus on your race. You're the only person that knows where you want to go, how you want to reach there, and how you're going to do that. And your habits are the ones that will, uh, you know, will, will carry you through. So instead of worrying about competition, just focus on the bull that's right in front of you. Focus on where you want to go, focus on your hopes, focus on your dreams, focus on your future. That's what matters because at the end of the day, everybody else is also trying to learn. So if you focus on somebody who's also trying to learn, it's like the blind leading the blind. So if you worry about the competition, you know, and what they're not doing or what they aren't doing, you lose track of the importance of what you are actually doing as your, as your own business. You stop respecting yourself, you stop respecting your work, and in the process, you, you just start following and consuming. And now what happens is it paralyzes you. You stop actually, um, you know, creating. And when you stop creating, you cannot contribute. And when you're not contributing, then what good are you? Yeah, so when you empower yourself, you, 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 you enlist yourself to really, really good habits, you know, you, it, it, you stop comparing yourself with other people. And it has, it has a lot to do with what you then contribute because then that's when authenticity comes in. You become your own person. This, this, is, this is spring, guys. It's not the Olympics. All right? Just run your own race, do your own thing. And in the process, once you start learning who you are and everything else, you begin to trust yourself. Some people are not showing up and contributing because they don't trust their knowledge. They don't think they're good enough. Guys, trust that you have all that it takes to get the job done. Because trust really, really starts to empower you aggressively towards your goals. If you trust who you are, if you trust your outputs, if you trust your own word, if you trust the way you look, you will, you know, really, really reach out to the people that are meant to, to be paying you for your money and you have the confidence. But if you spend a lot of time doubting your skills, the only thing that would actively come out of that is you just trying to course correct. And in the process, you're wasting time, money, and effort. Right now, I keep referring back to this. It's September. What have you achieved in 2017 so far? All that self-doubt, all that, you know, doubting yourself. What, what has that gotten you? Where are you now? So shift 
That whole thinking of, of, of focusing on doubting on yourself and start really, really believing in yourself by empowering yourself because no one is the same as you. We are all brought into this world to contribute. So you are doing the world a disservice by not showing who you are. You're doing the world a disservice by not showing up, you know, and contributing. Whatever you're going to try, it is all going to lead to the one thing. So never stop trying. Never stop believing in yourself. You know what? Thousands and thousands and thousands of grapes are crushed for you to have a glass of wine. And you know what happens to the, to the, um, to the skin and everything else? It's thrown away. All right, so you're going to need a, a lot of things to, to, to make sure that you have the last product. So who's to decide you've succeeded or you've failed? Only you. Your work, the people, your relationships, and what it is that you, you, you have shown yourself, you've trusted yourself, and you've started working towards. It's the beginning of the month, guys. Make this the beginning of the rest of the year. You must show yourself that you have what it takes to be resourceful to go for your goals. And when you learn to trust yourself, guys, magic happens. Because nobody's going to come and knock on your house's door and say, it's time. Alright? Time is moving and it's not waiting for anyone. So if, if you were going to start a business, if you were going to have some sort of income by the end of the year, September, October, November, December, you only have three months left. So for you to really, really live a life, um, you know, that is empowered, that is full of significance, and that is really, really open to possibility, you have to start educating yourself. Cooperate with, with your star player and understand who you are. And it's not a one-man job, guys. Love what you do so deeply that you're able to include other people in your dream so that you can also empower them to your success and their success. All right. I really want you to win, guys. I really, really want everybody else to win because I know that if we're working together, you will live a life of purpose, you will live a life of impact, and you'll live a life with prosperity. Let's continue this conversation in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the comments below. I really want you to have a good weekend. What I really want you to do is look at the time. It's the 1st of September. Have you achieved what you wanted for 2017? Shift your habits. All right. Thank you so much for your time today.